Uh, okay, so a, a couple of things just administratively quickly. Um, number one is this Thursday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mountain Time. Subtract an hour for Pacific, 10 to 1 for Eastern, noon to uh, 3. Uh, we'll be doing 100% uh, no distractions, first quarter marketing plan, January, February, March, with heavy emphasis on January, early February. Um, in COVID, not COVID, whatever the hell is going on, right? Um, so that's number one. Make sure you mark that down your calendar. We'll do the quick start meeting link, so our normal Thursday uh, meeting link for that one. Number two, for anybody who sent friends for the uh, – uh, the buddy day last week, thank you. If you had friends who wanted to attend but couldn't, they're still welcome to go to that page and register and they'll see the replay immediately live. Uh, not live, but they'll see the replay. Uh, in other words, the recording from that meeting. Uh, it's still up there and it's still available and they, uh, they will get just about as much out of it. Uh, so that's number two. Number three is we're gonna have another one in December, some date that I don't have in front of us. Nine. There you go. What? Yeah, yeah, December 9th. December 9th. At, I had it down as 3 Eastern. 1 o'clock uh, Mountain. That sounds right. Okay, so uh, December 9th, we'll do a follow up and uh, we have a registration link up for all that already. It's in the events and the page and so forth. And I'll, I'll send that out. Uh, the last thing on that kind of stuff is next week, we won't have any meetings for the week of uh, Thanksgiving. So don't plan on showing up Wednesday, Thursday, uh, or Tuesday, uh, or you can show up Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You'll just be like the student who shows up on the sidewalk with the doors locked, wondering why they didn't get the message. Uh, hopefully we'll do a better job communicating the message, although there won't be any direct mail out on that one. So uh, probably not. I'm sure many of you will still show up, but make a note next week. We won't, we won't be here. Uh, and Master Oliver, if I could jump in real quick, um, just for those who um, had some buddies that wanted you wanted them to participate in Buddy Day, uh, it seemed useful if um, I, I ended up registering a number of them for uh, those participants. Some of them didn't show, but I'm happy to do that. If you can send me over, I just need their contact information. I'm happy to get, you know, registered. Yeah, yeah. And, and, um, I wanted to um, um, to address um, additionally before we get into renewal blitz, the um, um, you know COVID stuff. You know we now have another rash of people. Oh my God, what do I do? They're shutting us down. You know the governor of uh, Oregon is a Nazi. The Michigan, you know, govern governor and one thing or another. Um, here's I think the right response to all this stuff is who cares. What we learned back in March, and thanks again to Amanda Olson for leading the way on the uh, enrollment side and to Olga um, for leading the way on the renewal side among a, a lot of others. But what we learned back in March is if you go into complete shutdown, they shut down the restaurants, they shut down your karate school, they shut down fitness, they shut down the dance studios, they, they, uh, they, they go into complete shutdown People are required to wear masks when they get into their car and they're not allowed to drive their car uh, beyond a five mile radius for their house, which I'm not ever sure what the hell that has to do with anything. Um, they actually did that in Colorado. You're supposed to stay within 10 miles of your house. It's like, well, I'm in an enclosed car. What difference does it make where the hell I'm driving? But no matter what they, they do and realize that it's, it's almost, um, well, it, it's universally there's a great deal of irrationality. There's a great deal of, of inconsistencies. There's stuff that doesn't make sense. You know, what difference does it make to have a nine o'clock curfew or a 10 o'clock curfew? Somebody's gonna explain that to me someday. Um, but regardless of what they do, we've been saying since March, we do remote learning, otherwise Google Classroom or the Rev Marketing Platform, one thing or another. We do Zoom classes. When possible, we do classes in the park, which may be a little hard right now in Minnesota. It may be just great in Texas. Um, and 
uh, when possible. We do social distance in the school and we do school printed masks and we check their temperature and we do all kinds of filtration systems in the HVAC and he'll get, you know, air purifiers and have them visible all over the place and, you know, hand sanitizer get by the gallon uh, all over the place and all that stuff, right? But remember what we've been saying if we've been saying that you'll open and then you'll close and then you'll open and you'll close in the physical facility, right? But everybody get out of your language that, you know, Governor Whitmer or Pritzker or whoever the hell Cuomo is forcing us to close. All that they're doing is creating mandates, whether they make sense or not. Uh, and it doesn't matter our opinion on that, whether it makes sense or not on whether you can physically be open with your physical facility and making decisions about uh, uh, whether you can do all four of those teaching modalities, three of the four teaching modalities or two of the three teaching modalities. Does that make sense? And for God's sake, I'm tired of people saying that, oh my God, our numbers are down because of COVID. Your numbers are down. If your numbers are down, and I don't mean to, to, to be too harsh because you didn't adapt. Uh, people who, who have, have their numbers are down, uh, their numbers are down because they expected them to be down because they didn't adapt very quickly, right? Now, we can go back to, to March uh, and uh, February for that matter, and different people made bad decisions about staffing and, oh my God, they're, you know, they can draw on employment and we can do, uh, you know, um, uh, PPP loans and all that stuff. Well, nobody in our team should have needed the PPP loan. And if you got the PPP loan, it was just found money that, you know, helps pay your payroll and pay your rent, which just, you know, the difference goes to your bottom line. Uh, but the reality is it doesn't matter what the government does in November, December, and January. Makes no damn difference because we've discovered, one, the Facebook advertising done right is working really well right now. Email marketing done right is working really well right now. And again, uh, both of them went up and, and improved dramatically. And in fact, the uh, cost per lead on Facebook will probably dip a little bit since all the political money other than in Georgia uh, has now gone away. Uh, you're going to be fighting Santa Claus a little bit, but still. Uh, but what we know is lead flow has been just fine. Doesn't matter if the public schools are shut down, the private schools are shut down, if they force you not to be open in your physical facility and all of the big events are, are, are closed. And by the way, there's no blockbusters coming up. Doesn't matter. Because we have the Parthenon and we know that Google's been working better than ever. SEO has been working. Pay-per-click has been working. Email has been working. Facebook has been working. For those of you who have been aggressive enough to get it set up, doing things with public and private elementary schools, middle schools, uh, uh, doing virtual and online stuff, they're very open to that. Getting publicity has worked great. Uh, the, the, the TV stations still love to have the film of, you know, you've got the Zoom class and you're adapting and one thing or another. What doesn't work is whining and failing to adapt. So that is, is what doesn't work. Now, on, the, on, on another side of it, and I don't mean to rant, but I wanted to, to um, make sure we're on the same page. On the other side of it, and by the way, we, we, we've, we've gone through this cycle uh, with everybody like six times uh, so far, right? I mean, we even you know printed it on DVD and CD and mailed it out, and here's the mindset, and here's the way the media wants you to look at, and here's the way you should look at, and here's the way all your failing friends and associates in our industry or similar industries, how they're whining and why, here's what reality is, right? We've been through all of that a bunch of times, but just anchor in, it just doesn't matter from the standpoint of your business being viable and you being successful. It just doesn't matter what your governor, your mayor, you know, the idiot politicians, the moron bureaucrats, none of that matters because we can do it just fine. First intro, second intro, enroll, 100% virtual. We can do just fine with remote learning plus uh, Zoom classes. Get rid of the whine of students don't like that or our retention. We found the retention was just as good 
except for people who stupidly transitioned or transitioned too late, we found the retention was just as good as it always was on, on virtual, as long as you were keeping track of everybody, doing progress updates, doing all the stuff you would normally do and, and then plusing it. Is this making sense so far? Uh, and, and by the way, here, here are some up-to-date stats. This is by, from the CDC. As, a, as a, a reminder, none of us are giving medical advice or legal advice and anything that you do beyond your local regulations is you know, up to you and I didn't suggest it. But here's the, lo the, the, the current CDC stats for, uh, for those people who have a lot of panicked students and stressed out moms and so forth. Of the entire United States population, under 44 years old, to date, 0.003467% have died of COVID. Everybody get that number? The 0.003 is a percent, right? So if you, if you just did it as a, as a straight number, it's 0. 0.0000. Three, four, six, seven. Of the entire U.S. population under 24, uh, the number is 0.00476% of the population. Uh, in the entire United States, out of a universe of 15,700, I mean, not 1,000, 15,793,631 kids who fall in the range of five to 14, there have been 39 deaths. Of the population in the United States of kids age one to four, uh, which is 3,783,052, uh, in the United States, there have been 16 deaths. To put it in perspective. So, of a population of 191,576,890 in the under 44 category, there have been 6,642 deaths. Okay, so when we start looking at running a martial arts school, teaching kids, um, uh, teaching young adults, teaching um, you know 20 something adults, 37. 30-something uh, adults, remember the death rate is 75 plus with comorbidities. If you're 75 years old and you have diabetes, this thing is, is bad news, right? If you're uh, um, 80 years old and you have uh, degenerative heart conditions, if you have uh, uh, breathing problems, lung problems, uh, any of that stuff, this stuff is, 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 is going to uh, uh, mess with you, right? However, if you're a nine-year-old, um, uh, especially a nine-year-old with no comorbidities, um, then you know they, they, in most cases, don't know they have it. Again, I'm not a doctor, but just to, to keep this stuff in perspective. Um, I don't see Olga uh, on the meeting, but her question was, um, our Nazi governor, and I don't I don't know the, uh, uh, or Soviet, uh, I, forget, I forget she used the word Soviet or Nazi or both. Um, although in American political discourse, you know, calling anybody right or left a Nazi is uh, uh, probably a bit extreme given what the, uh, the actual example is. Um, I, I do wish we would get over doing all that crazy shit. Um, you know, there's um, Nobody on the left who's a you know who's going to replicate Stalin, and there's nobody on the right who's going to replicate Hitler, no matter how much people hate Trump or hate Bernie, uh, whatever it might be. Um, but that having been said, her concern was Oregon, the state of Oregon, is making them quote unquote shut down. Again, that word is banned from now on. Nobody's making you shut down any more than Amanda was forced to shut down in February after I whined and bitched and moaned about that stupid banner that was on the front door. Um, sorry, Amanda, it just acres in. Uh, nobody is forcing anybody to shut down. All they're doing is, is regulating how many people you can have physically in your facility, no different than the fire marshals regulate regularly what your capacity is. Is that making sense? So if, if you've had a rough year to date, 
November, December is the time to do the renewal blitz and, and blow the numbers out and finish the year equal or ahead of where you were last year, right? We know that marketing of all stripes is working really well right now. We know that, for instance, um, I don't see Melissa on the, on the meeting. Melissa in Mercer Island, uh, suburban Seattle, had 80 leads uh, from Facebook uh, last month. Uh, and that's not a high number. That's just one that I, that I pulled at, at random. Um, if you look all the way, uh, you know, across the country, whether it's in Manhattan or whether it's in a uh, uh, small town, uh, Minnesota or anything in between, people are eager to do what we do. There's a lot of interest. There's a lot of activity. We don't have to price cut. We don't have to change anything other than we have to shift to Zoom. Go back to all of the original checklists. Go back to our original conversations. And remember, we said, you're going to probably until next July and maybe permanently maintain simulcast classes. Every class that's physically in the school is going to be on Zoom. If you're not allowed to be physically in the class, you're going to do a full schedule on Zoom. If you're allowed to be in the park, cast it on Zoom, assuming you have you know, adequate internet capacity build out your remote uh, learning uh, platform. We've said from day one that for the foreseeable future, that's going to happen. So zero, none of you should be worried about whether your state is quote unquote open, quote unquote closed, closing back, because that is BS. All that is doing is regulating how many people you physically can have in the school at one time. Has nothing to do with whether you can market your lessons, you can sell your lessons, you can charge your normal price points, you can um, uh, maintain 2%, 3% uh, uh, monthly dropout rates, whether you can close the same percentages as you've already closed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Is this making sense for everybody? See, and, and by the way, I, you know, I hear people say, oh, I'm just tired, you know, I'm, I'm tired of this. Tired of what? So what? You put some of the, the, the curriculum online and you broadcast it on Zoom as well as doing it in-house or not doing it in-house. Hell, uh, you know, not having to clean the facility every day. You, sh you know, you sh you're saving an hour there if you're not able to be live. What difference does it make at this point? Um, and so, again, I, I'm just going back to we very clearly demonstrated in March. You can do first intro, second intro enrollment online. You can do progress check renewal online. You can maintain the same dropout rate that you always had by doing Zoom classes. In fact, some people improved a little bit because folks who moved out of, out of state, moved out of, out of their area, stayed uh, enrolled in their lessons. Uh, heck, we have people who opened up their marketing and now they're in New York and they have uh, uh, people in Washington, D.C. and in Oregon and so forth. So in many cases, there were opportunities that opened up that we weren't even taking advantage of. The other thing that opened up, which I feel stupid for not doing before, is all of a sudden we don't have problems getting both parents there. All of a sudden we don't have problems getting both parents and grandma there. Because dad can be at his, his um, uh, law office and mom can be at work and the kid can be home at, with grandma and we still have all the decision makers there. And we can do that for intros and we can do that for renewals. So, uh, again, we found a lot of opportunities, and those people who adjusted, many of them are having comparable numbers that they had last year. Some are even up from last year, right? Other people are whining because they're watching every day what their governor is going to do. They're watching every day what their mayor is going to do. Well, stop watching. Stop paying attention. Stop stressing and worrying about it. It just doesn't matter what they do, right? Right? We all can conclude, whether you like the Democrats or you like the Republicans, they're all morons, right? We can all conclude the bureaucrats are all idiots. There's great inconsistency. Um, you know, the politicians are telling you not to go to a party, then they're all out, you know, going to parties. They're telling you you can't get your hair cut, and then they're going out and getting their hair cut. You know, there's, there's all of this hypocrisy. Well, if you didn't know that... that you know, that uh, politicians were hypocrites, you haven't been paying attention, right? Uh, go back to read Mark Twain, you know, 
He said, politicians and diapers must be changed regularly for the same reason. Um, we already knew that politicians were moron. Again, you could, you could be in love with Ocasio-Cortez and we know that all of them are morons, doesn't matter. The other thing we know is that bureaucrats are random, that they're no more expert than anybody else and that the more power they're given, the more they try to control people's lives. That doesn't matter what administration it is. That's, I, have, I have said since day one, uh, I can go back to 1983 and said there's nobody who ever showed up from the city, the state, the uh, county, uh, the federal government who was there to help me. Um, um, Ronald Reagan's line was, the scariest words in the English language is I'm from the federal government, I'm here to help. So we've all known that all they do at all levels of government is try to kill you. And we've all known that politicians are hypocrites. So stop paying attention to what the governor is doing and what the lawsuit and they found that what she did is, is this or that, or our governor in Washington or Oregon or our what it doesn't matter. Do what you're legally allowed to do and do plenty of enrollments, plenty of renewals by Zoom if you have to do 100% Zoom in person if you can do in person, all, of, all the way across the board. The, the last point, I'm eating into your time, Master Smith, but the last point is this, is it doesn't really matter what your belief system is about what the bureaucrats and the politicians are telling you that you can or cannot do. So you've got to set that aside and stop worrying about what your frame of reference is on it. What matters is in the kids market is the soccer moms in your neighborhood and how they're feeling about it after watching CNN and MSNBC and NBC and one, one thing or another. That's what matters, right? And we have a spectrum. So for the kids, we know that mom makes 80% of the decision, number one. Number two, we know there's a spectrum. There's a, a portion of people on one end who don't care, they'll come in and roll around and grapple and they don't care about social distancing and they're annoyed to wear a mask. And there's people at the other end that they'll have to be for vaccines that everybody has been vaccinated with, with two different ones and you know three cures. And the last case was three months ago before they're gonna be comfortable interacting with other humans. And most people are somewhere in between, right? So take your personal belief system out of it and remember that it's about, for the kids market, it's for, about the moms. And for the adult market, it's about that individual student, as well as their media circle of influence on how they feel about interacting with all of this stuff, right? So you've got to be a little, uh, an awful lot at the end of, hey, look, we put this UV light system into the HVAC ducts and we put this uh, HEPA filter system in and see those little black boxes. We've got air purifiers everywhere and see the boxes on the floor. Those are 10 feet apart so nobody can get within 10 feet and see this nice three layer mask. We give everybody a complimentary branded school mask on the, on the way in the door. And by the way, we require everybody to wash their hands or hand sanitizer on the way in the door, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You've got to do all of that stuff because you want to move yourself as far down the spectrum of the ones that are going to be comfortable to come in as, as humanly possible. Is this all making sense for everyone? So again, I'm going on a little bit of a rant because, well, we knew there was going to be a spike again in the fall. We also know that if you're, you know, if you're able to think rationally, who gives a shit about cases? It's the mortality rate that's important. You know, the good thing is the mortality rate continues to decline and the mortality rate is, is uh, um, um, I think the median is still like 75 years old. So if you're, you know, if, if, if you personally, you know, are, are 60 and up and have uh, health issues, you shouldn't be around a whole bunch of students. And you should be aware of not letting parents with heart conditions and diabetics and so forth in the school. Now, Olga's question though was, do I just ignore what the state said and do my own thing? I'm not giving legal advice, but it seems to me that if you have a, a, a risk of getting sued, the risk is you went against what your state and local regulations were, did your own thing, and now somebody gets sick and or dies. That seems to me where your biggest liability risk would be. 
is when you ignore what the local regulatory uh, authorities have said and basically take a, a you know, a dare them to uh, try to shut you down. Does that make sense? Number two is it doesn't matter what your opinion is, it matters what the average soccer mom is thinking. And again, if the average soccer mom who's a parent of your student sees you being uh, what they consider to be dangerous, they're going to have a, an image of you that's different than what you want it to be, which is you want them to perceive that you're doing everything in your in humanly possible to be safe. On that, I'll end the rant, but anybody have any questions or thoughts on that before? we go into uh, renewal blitz. No, Matt Smith, anything to add to that? I know that was a mouthful. Um, well, I think we just go on to the renewal blitz. I think, I think you made your point. Yeah. I think Tim was trying to say something, sir. Go ahead. Master Harrison, uh, no. Adam, Adam. Good question. So my state gyms are allowed open if it's individual workouts, but exercises. So now I know some people are doing their space and stuff out mm -hmm. and having separate stations like curves and that technically would classify. If I did that, would that be okay in my classes if I did that, separated them and had bag work and 10 different classes going on one class? That's permitted. Well, I, don't think, I don't think you have to have 10 different classes. You just you know, you figure out what the regulatory environment is that was written from by some idiot who has no idea about it, how our business works, right? And you figure out if you're complying with the intent of the law, then you're fine. And if you aren't, then it's uh, it's problematic. Thank you. Tim? You're muted. He's not no. muted. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, it's something. <laughs> your, your audio is non-functional for whatever reason. I got it. I just got my laptop. Go ahead. Okay. Right. Here. The question. The question I had. It really wasn't a question. It was a comment, if I can, sir. I, think, I know what Olga was talking about was um, there were several different options. It's about interpreting the uh, orders that are put out. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, I, I see where she's at, and it's a matter of where I'm sure that she and I think others can probably use some advice is um, on how to interpret yourself. Now, I interpret myself on whatever allows me to stay open. Exactly. Right. So, um, interpreting contract law. You yeah. Know. I mean, you know, either I'm a school or I'm a gym or I'm a youth sports activity. It really depends on what they're saying. And in these, a lot of these, um, orders, uh, suggestions, whatever you want to call them that are coming out. One thing's closed, but another thing can be open. Yeah. Well, as long as it's close enough, I interpret it as that I'm that. Yeah. So if that helps anybody. No, I, I, th I think that's exactly right. And with, 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 with two um, um, delineations, one is think in terms of how it's going to be interpreted by the soccer mom. Right. And number two is document the way that you're interpreting whatever is coming down the pike so that you can, you know, uh, uh, defend it later if you need to. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, but no, I, I would I would 100 percent agree with that. OK. Right. Thank you. Yeah. What 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 I don't want anyone to do is really think from a standpoint of what your gross active count and new enrollments renewals that any of this stuff really matters, right? Is what we know is if everything gets shut down, well, there's more people bursting for a desire to do something um, as a physical activity and as a mental diversion than ever. Because, you know, the, the, the one thing that is, is common right now is people are just over this, right? Is, okay, you did it to me once, but, you know, I mean, we got to, Kids got to go to school and I got to go to work and we've got to do stuff. And by the way, you know, what are you, you're closing the theater and the restaurant again, for God's sake. I mean, that's the, the generalized mindset. So people are looking for things to do. And the, the tougher the regulations are in your area, the more excited they are that you're doing online classes or that you're having things in the park or whatever it might be. So just recognize it is, is 
not only is not diminishing our market, it's improving our market right now. And uh, just to uh, uh, add on to what you said there, Master Oliver, <clears throat> I think it's important for everybody to get the message uh, that he's beating in to you right now is uh, you need to do whatever the hell you need to do to keep your business going. Whether that is all virtual, whether that's outside for the people in the South, or if you're in the North with good weather, uh, whether you can do some kind of things outside, as long as you follow, uh, like Tim said, I think that's a great example is uh, your interpretation of what your rules uh, on which, you know, do, which area do you fall? And based on that, what are your rules that you need to follow? And if that means you can have some, uh, even if it's a sparsely, uh, you know, a, a minimal amount of activity in the school, well, that works great for intros. You know, I don't know that you have to have your regular classes, uh, but if you do, they're virtual anyway, and simulcast. So you're going to have to have something going while you teach these people anyway that are you're going to teach online. So the idea is to keep everything going. So nothing stops, your marketing doesn't stop, your intros don't stop, your enrollment conferences virtually don't stop. Our renewal blitzing does not stop. Everything continues on. So if you're leaving anything out that you're, we're doing you know, in the school out of, even if it's straight virtual or anywhere in between, then you're missing the boat. You've got to, there is a way to do every phase of what we do. And if you can't figure it out, then you ask that question on the meeting that we have quite frequently during the week. And we'll tell you how to make that part of it work. Does that, does that kind of clarify, uh, kind of beat home the final nail uh, on Master Oliver's uh, point there? Yeah. And, 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 and as a shift is if your physical location is, is um, uh, not available and if you have a, a or if you have a, a pretty heavy percentage that are still doing virtual, the renewal blitz, it, it, that was the other question, um, the renewal blitz still works just as well. You have to modify based on the technology, right? So if I go back I don't know, to 1985. We didn't have text messaging. We didn't have uh, automated voicemail. We didn't have email, but we sure had direct mail. And I could have two or three things a day, you know, a week showing up in their mailbox about the program and about the, you know, the opportunity and one thing or another, right? Now you have direct mail, you have email, you have text messaging, you have broadcast voicemail along with Zoom uh, and along with, uh, you know, talking to them on the phone. So what we have to do is we have to replace the stuff that would happen physically, the shock and awe, if you will, of, oh my God, what are all the streamers and the uniforms hanging down from the wall? And we've got to replace the personal interaction and touching them on the shoulder when they're in, in the classroom with doing the same thing by Zoom, doing the same thing by telephone, and overwhelming them with direct mail, text messaging, email, and voicemail with a heavy emphasis on direct mail. So is it shifts the burden more to tools that you can mail, tools that you can email and text, and shifts it away from, you know, just having the school be, be dramatic looking. But that's really the only modification is when they come to class, it's a little harder to touch them on the shoulder, look them in the eye and do a mat chat. Um, however, you can still pull them into another room where you can still schedule it all by appointment. And you may have to do a few more